do a bit of a video I've got some footage that I'm going to just put together with this one but uh, reading through the comments and answering them the other night and someone asked about you know uh, taking strawberry runners um, which some of the plants you know they produce at different times but as I've got one that's producing runners right here I might as well I'm not going to take any just yet but I'll, uh, I've got one that's that's kind of uh, ready to go really so I'll uh, bring the camera a bit closer in and then uh, you can have a look, it's fairly simple, there's, there's no real set where you can just put it back in the pot and put roots out itself or I like to take them and put them in a separate pot and then uh, I can take them from the main mother plant and then uh, pot them in, or I'll plant them out later in the year so they can put the roots out through the winter months so uh, bring the camera a bit closer and we'll have a look when your plants are uh, starting to produce runners um, it'll it'll try and produce multiple runners. Um, I find it's better to just try and take one plant per runner. Um, you could go to the second one and go and link it out that way, but the idea is is feed that first runner, the first sort of offspring, and then uh, once that's got some roots in, it's good to go. So as this one's got uh, most foliage on it, you can trim some of your runners off. You know if you want. You know uh, this variety is the same variety that I have at the allotment. I've no idea the name of it. The only problem is it does chuck out loads of runners quite early where I've got some that are still happily fruiting away which is a different variety which are a bit more of an ever bearer which will produce runners a bit later on. So uh, for this video we'll uh, just use this one here and say you got a, that's the runner and you've got a plant growing here in the middle and it's going to try and do another one at the end here which we'll come to that in a minute. So there's nothing really fancy about it, like I say you could just put it you know, if, you, if you've got them in a, a row, you can just run these and plant them in a row, you know, about a foot away. That's like how they do it kind of commercially. They grow a section and they run off into the next row for the following year. But um, for us allotment is in gardeners and that, or if you just want to, you can, you, can, you can begin it all with just one plant. You know, I could take this one plant and then get rid of all the plants I have and they just multiply they will not if you put a strawberry in the ground somewhere it will just naturally take over so it can be a bit uh, tricky you know to get it to sit right you can cut notch some you know you can cut notch in your pot if you want but i've got a pot here and it's multi just multi-purpose compost and it's it's quite full i'm just going to lay that runner straight on the top that's all but what i'm going to do i'm going to get rid of this part because I don't need that so I'll get rid of that and all I've got here you can use anything um, it's just a nail that's been bent over uh, another thing that's good to use is if you look um, at a plumber's merchants or someone like screw fix and find uh, an underfloor heating pipe clip they, they're okay you want probably 20 30 mil long so you need to grip and then just basically just where it is there push that nail in you don't have to bury it into it because it, it'll right as long as it's in touch with compost it'll it'll reach out and, and latch some roots in and it doesn't take long and all you do is every now and then just check it you know say in a week come to it just give it a little little bit of a tug if it's attached so what I wait for is when I can see roots at the bottom of the pot and then all you do is you cut it away from the mother plant then because it's got enough roots to support itself if you cut it now you'd have to put roots out really really quickly it probably won't be able to do it so all i'm going to do i'm not going to because it's going to be hot and it's in full sun here i'm just going to get that pot and nestle it in the corner of that pot there so it's got a bit of shade you know it still gets sunlight but you do have to make sure you keep that compost damp you know, so it will need a bit of a water. So this will get some drip off it. You know, if it gets bugs on it or whatever, it doesn't matter at the moment, you know, because um, a, a big problem with strawberries is uh, vine weevil. They, um, they, they sort of dig into the roots. But 
it's like um, I don't know where you can see but I have a another one that's starting to run off there so I'll probably do the same with that you know if I think I need some more of these ones which I probably could do with to be honest but I've, I've got some of these at the plot near the compost bin um, there's a roll there by the net so I'll probably take my runners for the plot off them because I can run them off there um, and then when I'm ready to sort of redo a strawberry bed which might be in the asparagus bed I don't know but anyway um, so I'll just sort of show you that because you know someone asked I can't remember your name sorry but uh, I hope that kind of explains it so uh, you, the rest of the footage to follow was filmed you know um, well two days ago really yesterday you know I didn't do I think these uh, Octiva sativa lettuce have, um, they're just going to keep getting tall now and probably stick out a flower spark soon so I'm going to make use of its base and take what I can off these now and, and clear these, just these green ones, the red ones can stay in for a while because they've got a, a lot growing to do still yet. So I'm going to harvest these uh, lower leaves off. Uh, they've done all right. I've still got the ones at the allotment to uh, to pick out. I'll probably clear them out as well. Just case taking a few bits off. I mean, you could probably leave them a bit longer, but I'm not going to run out of lettuce. Is uh, going to plant some else in, in its place now. You know, I've had uh, probably about five five pickings off this lettuce. You know, it doesn't sound a lot, but I've got eight nine lettuce. I've probably had. Um, Three and a half, four pound of lettuce just off these. These green ones here. You know, a little bit more on the red, and a lot more on the mazure. Get on the other side and get them. roots in because uh, I need the space so just pull it out you know some of the roots you know anything that stays in the ground can uh, remain there I'll put them root balls down the back there for now because I've got a use for these Don't have to get all the soil off. It's gonna go in the compost heap anyway. So I'll, uh, I'll wet them uh, leaves up so they don't go wrong and then I'll, uh, I'll dispose of these. And I think you kind of know I'm going to dispose of these, those who followed my channel for a while. I've got one greedy lad here who will uh, quite happily prefer to take from the hand. So 
they'll quite happily uh, carry on eating them. Right, so now they're all out of the way. I just ran the hole through here just to make sure there's no bits of weeds knocking about. Um, they'll just dry out on the top. It is starting to spit the rain a little bit, even though the sun's out, but uh, I don't think it's going to chuck it down, hopefully. So I'm going to put these uh, climbing beans, well they're a runner bean, but um, apparently, I've not grown them before, the variety is Tender Star. It's supposed to be a runner bean, um, with like the uh, sort of firmness and texture of a, a French climbing bean. Now I prefer French climbing beans and runner beans, but uh, I find French climbing beans um, struggle a bit sometimes in exposed areas and the, the runner beans tend to be a bit more uh, hardier, so to speak. So I thought, well, never tried them before, so we'll give them a whirl. And I've got this bit of space here, you know, I've had a crop of lettuce out of here, so I'll shove them in. I've used eight foot canes, I've done the, I've put this cross section here to try and get a bit of stability sort of that way. I mean, it'd be sturdy enough going side to side, but that way it can rock quite a bit. It's kind of sheltered down here anyway, so well, it couldn't be simpler really. I mean, they're just in um, seven centimetre pots. You use root trainers or toilet roll tubes, they're just pots that I'd, um, I'd knocking around. I've had them out of a tray for a little while to try and dry the roots off underneath because I didn't want the roots coming out of the bottom of the pots, trying to keep as many of the roots contained in there as possible. So there's decent roots on it. It's fairly uh, straightforward, it's, it's quite a firm bed this. You know, it's not dead soft. It's just a case of shoving them in. Like I said, not dug this bed for a while, but uh, I didn't want to start turning it and stuff like that because it can dry out quite quick. It's just a case of just popping it, pop it in. I mean, it is a bit easier to sort of do this before you put the canes up, I guess, but. I shoved these up the other day because I was trying to work out where I was going to put these and I thought, well, this is as good a space as any. And then uh, you sort of like put it fairly close to the cane if you want them. Might take a couple of weeks once it's got to wrap around because you always go anti-clockwise. Um, direction the sun goes. You know, uh, in it. I don't know if it's any different on the southern hemisphere. I imagine it will be, possibly. But uh, once they've got a couple of wraps around, they'll be away. I'll go on with the rest of these, get them watered in, and then uh, see if we've got anything else to plant out. Turn the old watering can out. So you could keep a right hot spell, so. Right, good drinking now. Give them a chance to get some uh, roots down. And uh, fingers crossed, they should be okay. Right, well, get on some else. Right, I've got uh, this little space down here, which is a little bed next to my cucumber house. Um, it's not really a very productive bed because it's really I'm going to get that much sun here um, once the cucumbers get up and there's fences here so um, what I've got here is some baby corn called uh, snow baby so I don't think I've grown baby corn before um, it's just a last minute idea so they were sown for probably about two and a half weeks ago two weeks ago something like that so they could do with a little bit longer in pots but they're getting harder to keep moist now because it's a hot day they soon dry out so I can go in the ground because it is fairly damp this because it's got some manure that's spread on top of it so it is it's fairly damp underneath 
but it just doesn't do very well things in this bed a lot of the time it's just been it's sort of a dumping ground really um but it's starting to get lots lots of worms in it now so i'm hoping that it's kind of sorted itself out a bit i've got 18 but i've only got room for 16. you plant these six inch apart it's about 18 inch apart that way so i could probably sow a, a row of radish down the middle here or something you know for a bit of a quick crop um so see how they go they might try and lean out you know unless i've had something pure white on this back panel to try and get grab some light but um, I don't want to put them at the plot because I've got other sweet corn there and I don't want that to cause any problems because some sweet corns you can't put two different varieties in closest proximity and the only bed I'll actually have coming free when the garlic's out is right next to my sweet corn so this is going to have to be done here and there's nowhere else for it to go so I thought I'll shove it in if I get some off it, great, if I don't, then I don't you know, at least no harm in trying so I'm just going to, I pretty sort of punched the holes out yesterday I thought I'll uh, just try and work the spacings out. I thought I couldn't quite squeeze the 18 in. Just in case of digging all down. It's nice crumbly soil to be honest, so it should. Should do okay really. I say there's not stacks of roots but there's enough worms but there's also wood lice down here and the problem is down this end of the garden it's a bit of a, a bit of a slug trap you know they come out from behind there and down behind here in the neighbor's garden so it's not ideal for things like lettuce because they just get infested with slugs we'll label that but we can only try but this is pretty much it's just old compost old made compost has just been sort of put on here year after year um because at some point i'll probably extend you know i'll get a greenhouse to, to come right to the, the end here because it'll give me a bit more room for things like peppers and stuff but i'll i'll, uh, I'll deal with that expense once this is finally give up you know because it's still over its own Somehow, I don't know how, but it's still all it's standing up. Uh, some of them are still quite small. Pop them in. So I'll have a couple spare which I'll hold on to, just in case there's any uh, mishaps or anything. So it'd take it probably, you know, a week from to start putting roots out into the soil. And then uh, once you start seeing sort of like extra growth, they've kind of taken them. And I'm hoping that as the sun gets lower, they'll be they'll climb up and they'll grab it up there. You're supposed to get about seven or eight baby cobs per plant because you don't let this pollinate. You know, you take it as a baby corn and you have it like that. You know, funny enough, I mean, years ago before I built this little greenhouse. I grew sweet corn in this corner. It was probably the best crop of sweet corn I ever had. It was quite sheltered for pollination. I think the variety I grew back then was Northern Extra Sweet, I think it was called. You could probably stagger this if you wanted to, but I thought I'll follow instructions on back it, pack it, and see how we go. That sun is hot today. That's your thing. If you've got lots of, uh, lot of, it's a bit pot bound and quite a big plant, it's going to be stripping the moisture out of that plant, and it hasn't got the roots down into the soil enough, you know, to um, tap into the reservoir that's in the ground. So it just needs to get some roots out pretty quick, which kind of checks the top growth a bit while it gets some roots out, and then. Once it's got a good roots into the ground, yeah, all else, uh, everything else should be okay. It should sort of like suddenly have a growth spurt then.
and there's things like you know liquefied seaweed that's supposed to be uh, a bit like um, a growth stimulant whether it is or not I don't know but I use it sometimes just for a few basic essential trace elements and whatnot for the ground it won't do any harm I'm just going to a tight squeeze now I'll get the rest of these and then uh, water them, have a look at them then when I've watered them in Just leave them to it now. Like I say, in a few days, I might put a row or something down the middle. We'll see. Right, I'm going to spray my spuds now. Um, this is what I use JBA Blackguard. It used to be the old Bordeaux mixture, which I've, I've got some left, I'll show you. an empty bottle that's what you used to use but they, I think they ban it so last few years I've used that stuff so yeah I still get blight but not as early as others so it does work so it's not cheap about 18 19 quid a bottle but it goes a long way last year you mix about 250 litres with that so I'm currently using a five litre sprayer so I've put 10 mil of liquid in it And then it, you try and cover as much froth as you, as you can. It's not always uh, as simple as that. I've sprayed these, but I'll show you again on a couple of these. So it's kind of try and go upwards first. You're not going to get all the foliage, but most of it. And then go over the top have a poke about as well which ain't so bad if you just grow a couple of rolls but like me you've got loads so it's a bit boring so I'll, uh, I'll get on with the rest of this I've lost another three onions to some sort of uh, rot. It's kind of from the, uh, the actual basil plate, the actual uh, root itself, it's rotting. Right at the base of the onion, so I'll have to look into finding out what that is and try and deal with it for next year. Um, we'll have a look at the uh, cauliflower. Well, uh, I've got the missus on camera today. Uh, I'll pull a bit of this now because I need to go in and have a clear anyway, but uh, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this, but if you look down in there, we have a cauliflower. Uh, only small at the moment, so I think it'll be fine for another week. So it's just a case of going round and having a bit of a weed in any yellow foliage. Anything sort of low hanging, get out of the way. It's just something for slugs to climb up and cauliflowers can be a bit of a pain for slugs getting stuck inside and chewing away at it. But, uh, so I'll get on with them in a minute, clearing them. And there'll be an harvest probably for the week or so. We do a bit of a rain so. Uh, garlic. It all seems to be growing all right. It's a bit taller than usual. Um, no bulbs yet. Well, there is, but they're really pathetically small. So they need to do some serious bulking on. Sweet corn's growing all right, as is this uh, lettuce. But um, I don't need any more lettuce, so 
I'm just going to sort of rip that out and uh, compost it and I'll probably fill it full of uh, dwarf French beans when I come down next I'll uh, put a lot of seeds direct in you know radish and stuff like that just little gap fillers but it all seems to be uh, growing okay that's the swift well need to get on with clearing that uh, we'll have a look at the broccoli I might as well lift this net right off Take some more uh, side shoots and probably a cabbage as well. I'll go get me uh, secateurs and Jill will show you cabbage. If I can find my sack of tears. All right, I'll get rid of this cabbage here. I'll take these two actually. Well, well them two because they're the scabbiest ones and get them out of the way. In case of harbouring slugs. So I have no knives, so I'm using a rusty axe or blade I've just found. The teeth are about as sharp as my hands, but I'll do. That's the uh, golden acre or primal two. I'm just going to take some of the outer leaves off. Uh, they're a bit holy. Yeah, little tiny, tiny, tiny slug. They're the worst ones. Just give them a little uh, squeeze. So, that one and that one's pretty holy down the side. Proper hole of that one. But, uh, it'll do for cold slow. The other ones are okay, they're not as. This one's got a few holes on it. Well, there's the two cabbage I'm going to take. Clear that after. Right. I'll uh, start. Trimming some of these broccoli side shoots, just get my tray. <coughs> well, it's uh, pretty straightforward, really. You know, you, where I cut the main head off. That's gone, so now it'll just produce these side shapes. You can snap them off if you want, because you know that that stem there is um, pretty tender. You know it's all right. That one of these call that poor man's asparagus or something like that. A couple of smaller ones I'll leave. You always miss the odd one and then come back and it's perfectly blown into a bunch of flowers. But, uh, as soon as my other plants are ready, they can go in. Half expected to have a bit more time, I didn't think the collie had come that quick to be honest, all this.
So, yeah, decent crop of side shoots off these for a couple of good few weeks. I've had them for probably nearly up to four or five weeks. But uh, a bit something's been gnawing at that, this slug. Yeah, I'll do uh, some thunderstorms at some point. So. Rain will be here and the slugs will follow that. Can't rumble, it's been pretty slug free so far this year. For them. I'm just going to tidy up in these beds. Just had an accident with some secateurs and uh, they chopped my finger off. So I've got a makeshift plaster made of um, a bit of toilet roll and some uh, jute twine. It'll do till I get home. So I thought to uh, get it wrapped up and uh, try and do a little bit. We've got empty space over there now where them cabbages were to weed that because uh, now it's six bowls of weeds will come. It's at least some of my secretaries are nice and sharp. I suppose just rushing about here against the light. I missed a couple of sheeps here. All right, so we'll get on with the rest of these jobs and then uh, get home before the, uh, the sun sets. So, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next video. See you now, bye.